Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in today's video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the site navigation element. To begin with, we need to start in the WordPress admin panel because the site navigation element actually just renders normal WordPress menus. So we'll go to Appearance, Menus, and set something up. Let's go ahead and create a new menu, and we'll name it Site Navigation 2, and let's click Create Menu. Now this is familiar to anyone who's worked with WordPress. We basically just tick the boxes next to all of the items we want in our menu and add them in. Then we can rearrange them to put them exactly where we want. We can also nest them to create submenus. We'll do that in a minute. Let's go ahead and add people in process here and we'll put those under about. Now when you're using oxygen, there are a few new options here in this screen as well. So let's start with our contact menu item. And you can see we have a field for description and image. So for the description, we'll put 24 seven support available. And for the image, we'll just go grab a link from our media library. So let's open that up. We'll grab this icon here and copy that to the clipboard. And we'll go back to our menu screen and paste that in. And then for our submenu items, I think I'd like to have a description here as well. The best team hands down and process would be expertly refined and improved. So now we've created our basic WordPress menu here in the WordPress screen, and we've added our descriptions and an icon to this last menu item. So let's save that. And then we can jump into Oxygen and take a look at what it looks like to work with this menu in the site navigation element. Here we are in our main template and I'm gonna drop in a site navigation element. And let's go ahead and choose the menu we just created. And you can see by default, it looks all right, though our icon is a little bit too big. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of the styling options. And along the way, we'll kind of whip this thing into shape. So if we go to mobile settings, we'll probably want to choose a mobile breakpoint at which we want this to switch to a mobile menu layout. We'll choose less than 992 pixels and we'll tell it to put the menu on the right hand side. You can also leave it at left, which is the default. This just decides when the mobile menu comes into play. And once we get to that breakpoint, just to give you a bit of a preview, this is what the menu will look like but we don't want that for right now. We're gonna keep it at less than 992 pixels so that we can work on styling the desktop menu first. Now under general styles is where most of your changes will be made initially. We can change our primary color which affects the top level text color. Let's go ahead and just shift this all to more of a blue color or perhaps maybe a red. And let's lighten that up just a little bit. As you can see with this one control, I'm changing a lot of the colors throughout the menu element. This makes it really easy because we tried to apply these defaults really intelligently across the entire menu element to make sure that you don't have to go through a bunch of menus and control sections making small changes along the way. Instead, you make most of your changes here and they apply across everywhere that they need to apply. So I've just set that back to purple and for our background color, this is gonna impact our drop-down backgrounds. So if we wanted that to be a different color, we could adjust that and change it to something else. But for now, we'll leave it on the purple color. Now, our neutral color is actually used for the background of our top-level menu items. So if we give this div that they're in a background color, you're gonna see that they actually have a white background. And then if we go back over here to general styles on the site navigation element, you can see that this neutral color is what is tweaked there. You're gonna to wanna to leave this as a very light color as a general rule because of the way the colors are applied. And then the active slash hover color does exactly what it says. It changes the background of elements when they're hovered or active. Again, this is probably best as a fairly light color. So let's go ahead and set that back to kind of a very light purple. Now we come to the radius and spacing options. Border radius just rounds the corners of everything, including drop downs. It doesn't have much impact at all on the mobile menu, but for the desktop menu, this can be a nice setting to have. 
For now, we're gonna leave that at zero. And then spacing is a global spacing control that controls the spacing of all the menu items. We can step this up a little bit to 12 to see kind of what that does. You can see it kind of makes all the buttons bigger. This is a control you definitely want to be very reserved with. If you make big changes with it, you're gonna have an undesirable result. For instance, if we set this to zero, it doesn't look good. If we set it to 32, it obviously does not look good. So let's go ahead and set that to something like eight, which is the default, which looks pretty decent. And in a case like this where our menu item is on a darker background and the top level menu items look kind of like buttons, we can choose to add space between these items to give us a better result. Now we have a few other options. We can use a transparent background for top level menu items, which in this case we might want to do. But as you can see, we have a dark background. So let's get rid of this background color and we're going to have a much better result there. That control can be very handy depending on what your site navigation element is actually on top of. And then we have the option to disable the current menu item underline, which is just an underline that appears when you're on the page that a link points to. Finally, we have some animation controls. These allow us to control the animation of the drop down menus and the mobile menu. So you can see the scale animation there. We have slide up drop down, and then we can choose none. These are also aware of prefers reduced motion. So if a user has set up their browser to not play animations, these animations will not run. Instead, it'll just act as if we've chosen none. We can also set the duration and the timing function here. As a general rule, these defaults should work for most use cases, so you shouldn't have to tweak those. So let's jump back out of general styles, and now we get into CTA styles. Here we can choose to style the last item as a CTA. And you can see that it makes that last item look a bit more like a button. And we can choose solid or outline for the button style. We can also set it to have two CTAs, which will actually switch the last two items in the menu to a CTA. And then we can choose the style combination between those two, between solid slash outline and outline slash solid. But for this, we'll stick to one CTA with a solid style. We can adjust the colors here, which is an override of those global color settings we just adjusted. We can change the background and the color, and then we can adjust those colors on hover as well. We'll just set these to something crazy here so that you can see the effect. Now let's clear those out, and we'll just leave the defaults in place for this. And now let's go back, and we'll take a quick look at typography controls. So here we can override the typography settings for all menu levels. If we want to adjust font size, font family, font color, etc., we can do that here. As a general rule, you won't need to do this, but the option is available in case you need to. You also have the same controls for individual menu levels. So main will affect the top level menu items, sub menu will affect the sub menu items, and sub sub menu will affect the sub sub menu items. We can also tweak the description typography as well. You can see we can adjust the size of the description, which will impact not only top level menu items, but anywhere that there is a description for a menu item. Let's clear that out and go on back to the icon settings. So let's go here and go to link icons. As I said before, our link icon, that little magic wand there is a little bit big. So we're definitely gonna wanna step that down. We'll do 32 pixels. And then we also have this option to invert on submenus and CTAs. This works best with black or white icons. And in cases like this where our icon is black and it's on a CTA, we can invert it to turn the icon to white. That would also invert any icons on submenus as well, which just produces a much nicer result for darker icons. Now let's go back. We can adjust the drop-down icon, its size, and its color, which just adjusts the icons that indicate that a menu item has a submenu. And then if we go back, we get into mobile icons. Now, to show these, let me go ahead and switch this to the mobile state. So we'll go to mobile settings and choose always. Now let's go back to icons and mobile open icon. We can choose an SVG icon from any of our available icon sets. We can adjust the icon size and the color, or we can switch to a CSS icon if we want an animated hamburger. 
So we can choose an animation from the dropdown, and then when we click our menu, the icon is actually animated, which is difficult to see with the mobile menu popping up over it, so let's go ahead and swap that. We'll go to mobile settings and set that mobile menu to show up on the left, and now you can see that animation a little bit clearer. So let's go back to icons, mobile open icon. We have a few different animations available here. Here's the basic one. And then let's take a look at drop in. And you can see that's a nice modern effect for the mobile open icon and can really step up the design of your site. We can also adjust the icon size when using a CSS style icon and of course the color. So let's go ahead and clear that out. We'll leave the icon size in place and go to the mobile close icon. Now this has the same exact controls as the mobile open icon, except for when we choose the CSS icon type, we do not get a choice of an animation because it's just a close icon. It doesn't need to transform. If you're using the CSS icon type for the open icon, you should probably use the CSS icon type for the close icon, just so that the X matches the close state of the mobile open icon. And for the mobile close icon, we can choose left, center, or right positions. And if we jump back to the primary tab, you can see that's about everything as far as controls are concerned for this element. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to work with the site navigation element in Oxygen. Thank you for watching.